All right, this is Joe Winters. I'm going to show you that Christian worldview explanation. You can do this on a napkin in a restaurant. You can do it on the back of a business card. I've done this on the back of a business card. But here it goes. In answer to the question, where did this stuff come from? The Christian response is that there is a God. He's king, he's sovereign, he's ruler over all, pictured by a crown. And there is a universe pictured by a circle. <laughs> and God created it. There are people that are old earth creationists. There are people that are young earth creationists. There are people that have all kinds of different views on that continuum. Big picture is there is a God. There is a creation. God's outside of his creation. And he spoke it into existence out of nothing. Makes about as much cleverness as a piece of super dense matter exploding and giving us a planet or the sun. It actually makes more sense. So God is the creator and he creates people, human beings, men and women in his image. In fact, that's what my shirt has on it here. i make this, this woman have longer hair. It says, Salem Elohim. That's Hebrew for in the image of God. We're made in the image of God, male and female. That's where the stuff came from. That's where life comes from. That's where love comes from. That's where the universe comes from. That's how we were meant to be. What is the human problem? The human problem is this. God is still God. God is still good. God is still a wonderful creator. But his people, the crown of his universe, have moved out from under his authority. They've set themselves up to be kings and queens. They've flipped off God, as it were, and they've set themselves up to be the king and the ruler. They've basically rejected God's authority over their life. They've now set themselves up to be in control, but they've lost control of themselves, and they've lost control of the planet through pollution and violence and the arms race and drugs and hatred and, and things all off the hook. That's the human problem. We're the problem. Who moved? We did. The Bible says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone his own way, not God's way, his own way. Is real justice coming? Well, the Bible teaches that this particular state is not going to last forever, that God is holy, and a day is coming when we're going to discover that that crown didn't fit very well. It will fall off, in fact, and we will be dead. And if we're not in a good relationship with God, we are under his just judgment. But the good news, and that is real justice, and it is really coming, um, the good news is, and this is why the gospel makes so much good news, is who is Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ is God the Son. God is triune, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And Jesus comes into our broken world, and he lives his whole life under God's authority perfectly. And what is his reward for doing such? The reward is this. We crucified him. He died willingly the consequences of our sin that we deserved. He took it into his own body on the cross, on the tree. That's who Jesus Christ is, the God-man that suffered and died in our place to take the payment, the just payment for our sin. But people don't know this. So that gets to the next question. Is there life after death? Well, because Jesus conquered the grave. He didn't stay dead. On the third day, we celebrated it called Easter because he conquered the grave and didn't stay dead. We can, by putting our trust in him, know that we are going to heaven to be united with him one day. The scripture, Peter puts it like this. He's given us a new birth into a living hope through Jesus' resurrection from the dead. Muhammad didn't rise from the dead. Buddha didn't rise from the dead. None of your political figures have risen from the dead. Joe Biden's not risen from the dead. Donald Trump, Bush Jr., Bush Sr., Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton. doesn't matter who your hero is. Once they're dead, they're dead. Jesus conquered death. And he is the reason why we can know that there is eternal life, but on which side is it? That's the question. And that gets us to the question of how then should we live? And... There are basically two answers, and one way is it really living. One way is we can continue to run our own life, our own way, running away from God, and if we do that, eventually we will die, and we will be separated from God, what we chose, for all eternity. The other way is for ours. I'll just put it here for you, for ours, so you can remember it. Our is repent. 
we say, God, I want to turn. I want to come back under your loving authority. Even though I'm still living in a broken world, I'm turning. Secondly, that's repentance. Secondly, I'm going to rely upon what Jesus did, not what I did. I'm not good enough to have done anything worthy of anything but death. But I'm relying on what Jesus did on the cross to take the penalty for my sin and what he did to conquer death, because I can't conquer death. I'm relying fully on him. Third, I receive the eternal life that he has to offer. If he's alive now and he can give me new life now, I want it. Jesus, come into my life, change me. And lastly, the last R is resolve. I've made a decision. I've made a commitment. I've written it down. I'm resolving to follow Jesus Christ as Lord gladly. Gladly following him as Lord Jesus. Because actually he was Lord all along. <laughs> See, the crown, the crown is the, the one, one consistent all through. And that is what the Christian faith calls the gospel. We're turning from ourselves to trust Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins, rose again, and according to the scriptures, and he is a live and living entity to be dealt with, and he is a giver of eternal life and of a purposeful life that doesn't contribute to the brokenness. We can't help it. From time to time, we really follow up. But repents of it and turns daily to him, seeking his life in a broken and fallen world. And that's the good news.